Hi everyone, Frank Spangler again with ADRA Canada and today we're going to be continuing our series on the 90D camera, uh, specifically how to uh, film or take video with the Canon 90D. We're going to be showing you how important it is uh, to be using the manual settings as you take video and make sure you're, that you're in the manual mode and what you need to do in order to get good video in the manual mode. So we have a lot of ground to cover. Let's get started. All right, I think the first thing that we should probably do is take a moment and review the menu options and how to set them uh, for taking video with the Canon 90D camera. The first thing that you need to do is make sure that your uh, option here is set to the red video camera because your menu options are going to change depending on where you have this set. And when you want to change uh, your menu options for taking video, you should have this switched to video to be able to see all of the options that are available for video. All right, and then we can go to our menu button here, and it's the very first item on the very first top left-hand row where you see the camera there, and uh, number one is movie record quality. And you probably notice right away that I have my video setting set to 4K, first of all, and I have it set to what we call film rate, which is a frame rate of 23.97. And that's what I'm shooting most of my video at these days. And we're asking that uh, all of the ADRA field staff that uh, are out there filming projects that they'll be sending me the footage, I would like you to be in this same setting as well. And that way, as I put a promotional video together or an annual report video together, that all of the footage that I'll be working with that has come in over the year from various parts of the world will all be using the same frame rate that I'm using. And that will help our videos look uh, more professional and cleaner. So I uh, recommend that you have these settings, but let's just take a look quickly at some of the options that you have here. Let's just move, and you can just use your finger uh, or you know you could use your buttons here. We notice that in NTSC, and by the way, your Canon 90D camera, regardless of where in the world you bought your camera, can be set to either PAL, which is the standard for most of the world, or NTSC, which is Canada, the United States, Japan, and a few other countries. I have mine set to NTSC, and you probably should as well uh, for the video clips that you might be sending into our office. Just keep it on NTSC even if you are living in PAL country. The only time that you might want to switch your camera to PAL is those instances where you might be filming a commercial or a, a short uh, report video that would be broadcast in your local country on television there. Check with your broadcaster. They may require you to be filming and editing in uh, the PAL standard, which is 25 frames per second. And even though, as we look down our list here, we do not see 25p as an option, if you do switch your whole camera over to PAL, then your options for 25p will show up here. Let's just take a look at the other options that are available here. We could set it to um, NTSC standard, you know, the 29.97. We could, if we want to, shoot in just HD. And in the HD setting, we have the option of filming at that higher frame rate that I told you about, what's basically 60 frames per second. We, it's actually 59.94 progressive. When you might want to choose that option is when you're filming things that might look good in slow motion. It'll look smoother than if you shot it at film rate or uh, NTSC standard. But then you have the other options for HD. You know, you can do 
uh, 29.97 you can do the film rate for example you will notice one option here that is a little different uh, it says full HD 29.7 has a little arrow down let's click on that notice that that says light and what that means is that it's not going to use as high a bit rate when you have that setting and a lot of people who have small cards might choose that option so that they can get more video onto one card but i don't recommend it because it really reduces the quality of the video in fact that's one of the reasons why i promote and request that people shoot in 4K. If you watched the earlier video, I gave you a list of reasons why I thought it was important that everybody these days be filming in 4K. Well, since I've had an opportunity to work with the camera more uh, since I made that video, here's one more to the list. I didn't even notice it until today when I was preparing for this lesson. This is news to me. The Canon 90D camera does not give you the option of all I encoding. You'll notice here that it says IPB in brackets. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, well, where's my all I option? And so I'm clicking through and I don't find it anywhere. There's no all I setting, which means that the Canon 90D camera is not using uh, the best possible bit rate for the quality and the way they encode the video is not as good as if we had the all eye settings. Canon likes to preserve their higher end quality and not have their entry level cameras compete too much with their more expensive bodies. And that's probably why they chose this. It's a good camera for entry level and then as you realize that this is something that you really want to do in a professional way, then you will step up to a higher quality uh, body, like for example, maybe the 5D Mark IV. Uh, that's a camera that I just love to use out in the field, both for shooting photography as well as shooting video. But to get back to my point that I'm trying to make, this is another good reason why you should have your camera set to 4K. Because even if we are in the IPB, the setting of 4K is going to give you the highest bit rate. Which means that I'll be able to take your 4K video and bring it into my HD project and we'll still get fairly decent results even though it's encoding only in IPB. So now once you've made the selection that you want to make for sure, just be sure you hit the set OK button and that's what will be remembered. I'm still at 20. No, we don't want to be at 29.97. Let's change that back to 23.98 and hit OK. All right. Now there's one more thing that we should show you before we leave the menu here. And that is if you did want to record something at a very high frame rate, you know it's going to be used in slow motion and that is the high frame rate. It doesn't show up in the movie record options here. Um, the highest you can go, you'll notice, is a frame rate of 59.94. You don't see any other options in that. But the Canon 90D camera does allow you to go to a higher frame rate. I believe it's like 120. And the way you get to that is by uh, choosing the high frame rate and make it enabled. And hit OK. And now we're recording at 119.9 frames per second. And where you might want to use this is if you're filming something that you know would look beautiful in a nice slow motion. And filming it at this higher frame rate will allow you to have a much smoother slow motion shot um, than if you were filming in a, say, a film rate but I would use it sparingly. It disables certain aspects of uh, the Canon 90D, the most important one being autofocus. Uh, when you're in this high frame rate, you will need to manually focus. And uh, so just be aware of that. It also disables the sound, although that's not that critical because when you put something into slow motion, you usually don't use the sound anyway. You can always get some sound effects and add it in if you need to. 
All right, so high frame rate is a possibility, even though it doesn't show up in the regular menu options there. Just remember, it is there for those moments that you know would look beautiful uh, in slow motion. All right, let's get on with our lesson. We need to talk about filming in the manual mode. First of all, let's talk about why it's important that you only do video in the manual mode. Now, that is not to say that you can't take video in the auto settings of the camera. I'm sure that many people have bought a Canon 90D and have been blissfully filming away in the auto settings of the camera. And for the most part, they're probably happy with the video that they're getting. It's fine for shooting family videos. But when you're wanting to use your camera in a more professional way, it's a good idea, almost imperative, that you learn how to film or take video in the manual mode of the camera. And this goes not just for the Canon 90D, but any Canon or any DSLR, when you're trying to use it to take good, high quality video for professional purposes, you really need to be filming in the manual mode of the camera. And the reason is, is because when you try and take video using the auto settings of these cameras, you are turning over uh, all of the decisions to the computer of the camera. And while these recent model cameras do a fairly good job of making good decisions when it comes time to taking photographs, you know, 80% of the time we mentioned in our last lesson, it's going to be okay. Um, it limits how creative you can be, but usually it gets the exposure right and it's a usable photo. But when it comes time to making good decisions about the settings for video, the computer doesn't always, or almost never, we'll say, makes the best decisions for uh, professional looking video. Now, some may ask, how bad is it? <laughs> when I have the uh, camera on auto settings for taking video, you know, how, how bad is it? Well, I would say that the computer of the camera is making the wrong decisions for getting professional looking video almost all the time. Uh, not only is it choosing the inappropriate shutter speed, uh, probably the wrong ISO setting, um, but it is fluctuating those settings all the time as you move the camera around. You're pointing it to different settings or you're, you're making a slow move, you're moving from one brighter area to a darker area. It's going to be making adjustments all the time, which is going to be noticeable in your video and look very unprofessional to have these micro adjustments happening all the time. Let's go ahead and hit record on the camera. Now, in order to see the decisions the camera is making um, automatically, you just need to press down on the shutter release button lightly, and you'll see the shutter speed show up here, the f-stop, and the ISO. Now, for this room, um, the, light, the amount of light in this room, the ISO is a fairly good uh, choice, 800, probably fine. If I was doing it manually, I'd probably use the same setting. However, if I was to take the camera off the tripod and roll video as I walked around the studio, this ISO would be fluctuating, uh, moving up and down. The f-stop, that's probably okay as well. The problem is, since you're giving control over to the computer, you lose all creative control. When you want uh, fewer things to be in focus, like when you're doing an interview, you're not going to be able to get that because you've lost control over your aperture. If you want everything to be in focus, you lose that ability to have that control when you turn everything over to the computer. But here's where the real problem is, and that's the shutter speed. You'll notice that it's, has, the computer has chosen a shutter speed of 1 25th of a second, probably because we have it at a film rate of 23.95, and it's just kind of matching that. The problem with that is that your ideal shutter speed setting 
for taking video is always double your frame rate. So we have a frame rate of basically 24 frames per second. Our shutter speed should be double that, a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. If we had our, our film settings set to NTSC, which is a frame rate of 29.97, then the appropriate shutter speed that you want to make sure it stays at is going to be 1 60th of a second to get the best looking video. However, when you have it on auto settings, the computer is just going to be all over the board. When you step outside, for example, it's going to maybe put that shutter speed up to 1 250th of a second or 1 500th of a second. And if you're capturing motion, uh, that video is going to look very jittery in, the, in your edit. Right now in Canada, we are in the middle of winter, so it's difficult for me to get out and roll some video with the Canon 90D to show you examples of what I mean. But the other day, the family went out for a walk and I did take the 90D out and filmed a little bit in auto mode and then uh, also in the manual mode so that you can see the difference. And uh, perhaps I'll show you that. One uh, example I think that might show what I'm talking about is we went into a house that was under construction. I walked around a little bit in the auto settings and then I changed it to manual settings and kind of did the same little walk around. I think you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when it comes to how the computer makes inappropriate setting uh, uh, decisions to get video that isn't the best. So here I am walking through the house using the auto settings of the camera. You can see the problems that the video has. That's not going to be any good. Yeah. 5.6, the ISO keeps going up and down. Yeah. And now here I am uh, following that same path with the camera in the manual settings. And you can see how much better control I have over the quality of the video. And so what our ideal is to be able to have complete control over the shutter speed and make sure that that shutter speed for as much as possible is set to double your frame rate. And because we're filming at 23.97, we want to keep the frame rate at 1 50th of a second for most of the video that we take at that setting. But when we have it on auto settings, you're just a slave to whatever the computer decides for you, and your video is not going to be in a professional standard at all. Fine for family photos, fine family memories, probably better than most smartphones are taking, but not good enough to be used in a professional edit. We still end up using that video, but we're very embarrassed to include those kinds of shots in our uh, high quality pro promo that we're doing. So we're trying to encourage everybody to take that little extra effort to learn how to film in uh, using the manual mode. And it is actually quite simple to do. Let's show you how, uh, how simple it is. Really, in the end, you're only going to have to make adjustments to one setting. People say, oh, if I, if I have to shoot video in the manual mode, I'm going to have to be constantly adjusting three different types of settings, the aperture, the ISO, the shutter speed. But in reality, it's not true. And let me show you what I mean. Let's turn our mode dial over to the M for manual. And now let's take a look at um, our readout here. We've got 1 25th of a second for a shutter speed still. Uh, it's at F 4.5 and the ISO is still at 800. It's a little overexposed, I'm guessing, just by looking at the screen here. Let's take a look at where the needle's at. Oh, it says it's right bang on. Okay, good. However, because that's not an appropriate shutter speed, we need to change it. And if you watched our last lesson, and or maybe I should rephrase that. <laughs> if you haven't watched our previous lesson where we talk all about how to take photos using the manual mode, I really recommend that you see that 
probably before you go any further in this one. Just put a pause on this one, stop and go back and take a look at that. We cover a lot of ground in that one about how to change your settings in the manual mode for taking photographs. And I don't want to have to repeat all of that again here today for uh, using the, the setting wheels and dials for taking video. So I'll put the link to that video in the description below so that you can take a look at that. Now, if you have watched that video, you'll know that the way that you change the shutter speed with the Canon 90D, and this will be true for, for most Canon cameras, unless somebody's gone into the menu settings and changed that so that this is the aperture wheel and the back is the shutter speed. Uh, but on the Canon 90D, the top wheel is how you change your shutter speed. So let's just roll that down and take a, a look at the back of uh, the screen at the back of the camera, you'll see that you are adjusting the shutter speed. We now have set it to 1 50th of a second, which is appropriate for the frame rate that we have set for taking this video. You want to keep that at 1 50th of a second for as much as possible. Now, there will be times when you have to make a compromise on this. We want to keep it at 1 50th of a second as much as possible to get the best looking video uh, for this uh, frame rate. But there will be times when, say, you're outside in a really bright environment, and even with your f-stop all the way down to f22, it's still uh, going to be too bright at 1 50th of a second. And in that case, e even if your ISO is down to 100. Uh, and uh, so in that case, in that environment, you might have to bump up your shutter speed to maybe be, you know, 1 60th, 1 200th of a, uh, a second, maybe even 1 500th of a second in order to get properly exposed video in that bright, that really bright environment. Now, there is one trick that you can do to avoid these high shutter speeds when you're shooting video, and that is to purchase a neutral density filter that you can screw on to the end of your lens and that way you can limit the amount of light that's coming in and be able to keep an appropriate shutter speed for your frame rate. We'll maybe talk more about that in another lesson down the road. Let's not get sidetracked for today. But for as much as possible we want you to keep the shutter speed at 1 50th of a second and so, you know, this is one setting that you can set at the beginning of the day and pretty much forget about it. You don't have to be adjusting this. We don't want you to be adjusting the shutter speed all the time. We don't want the computer adjusting the shutter speed. We want you to have it set at a shutter speed that is double the frame rate that you're shooting at. So, set it and forget it. You're not having to adjust that. The other thing that you can probably keep at a constant for most, well, at least an hour or so, two, two or three hours of your day, is your ISO. If you're filming inside, you're going to set the ISO to an appropriate uh, setting for the light that's in that room. Set it and forget it. If you're outdoors filming, you're going to be setting that ISO probably at 100 and never have to touch that at all. So the only thing that you're left with that you need to adjust is your aperture, your f-stop. And on the Canon 90D, that's at the back of the camera, the big wheel at the back. Uh, you can see that as we roll this back and forth, that uh, the f-stop is changing, the aperture is adjusting. And so if you're leaving your shutter speed constant, your ISO constant. The only adjustment that you're going to have to make as you're walking around filming is the aperture. Just take your thumb and always have it on that wheel and make adjustments as necessary. After you uh, do a number of practice sessions this way, you'll find that it just becomes muscle memory for you and you're always constantly adjusting the back wheel to make uh, compensations for your exposure by adjusting your aperture as you go around, leaving the shutter speed and the ISO pretty much alone. And that makes filming in the manual mode very easy. You're just having to take your thumb and adjust as needed. Now, how much to adjust? How do I tell where it 
I should stop rolling back and forth as I move into different lighting scenarios. Well, one way as you start out is just to keep an eye on your meter. And to see your meter, you just press, press gently down on the shutter and you'll notice that the meter shows up. So that uh, then as you make adjustments to your back wheel, you bring that needle into the center. And as long as it's in the center for most shots, you're going to get a good correctly exposed video clip. Now there will be times when your maybe your subject is backlit where you'll want to compensate one way or the other to get the person correctly exposed. But for the most part, you can be confident that if that needle is in the center, you're going to get fairly good looking video, correctly exposed video. However, after a while, you'll become so familiar with your screen and what it should look like when the needle's in the center that you find that you don't have to really check that very often. Uh, you'll just, it'll just become natural for you just by looking at the screen to know whether it's a good exposure or not. And then all you have to do is keep in the back of your mind that if you can't get a correct exposure by adjusting just the aperture, that you're going to have to change either the ISO or your shutter speed your first choice is going to be the ISO because remember as much as possible we want to leave that shutter speed alone. We don't want to go past the what's double your frame rate. So your next choice would be to adjust your ISO. Let's say in this darker room uh, we're just not able to get a correct exposure uh, with the at the f-stop that we want. Well from the last lesson, you know how to find that button with your eyes closed. Just click down on that. We see it show up here uh, at the back of the screen. And let's bring up our ISO to say 1600 for this room. And now we have more range of options for the aperture to be what we want. So I'm kind of rambling, but my point is that shooting video in the manual mode is easy. and it doesn't take long to learn it. My assignment to you now is to take what you've learned in this lesson and go find a beautiful park or someplace in the city where it's safe uh, for you to practice shooting in the manual mode. Or We try and avoid the word shooting. Let's say filming in the manual mode. Um, you set, you know, you go into the park, you set your ISO for this environment, you forget it. You set your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. You forget it. And now start walking around using your thumb to adjust the aperture to get the best exposure where you are. So that's your uh, assignment now is to go out, spend maybe two or three afternoons practicing, practicing, practicing filming using the manual mode of the camera. And go ahead and send me some samples of the, your practice shots and I'll give you feedback on, on what I see. I'll put a link in the description below uh, where you can upload those shots. And uh, I'll be happy to take a look at those and uh, give my feedback on what you've done in your practice sh uh, sessions. And then you'll be ready to actually go out into the field and start getting great looking video for our edits. Now, we're going to continue our series. Um, we're going to talk more about how to film good interviews. We're going to talk about how to get great audio. In fact, let's just take a moment here and show you how you can see more information about the video that you're taking. This little button here called the info button is your friend to help you understand uh, what's happening more. Here you'll notice that we now have audio meters uh, for the video or the audio that we're picking up and this is really helpful. I like to have this on all the time. I want to know if I'm getting good quality audio as I'm filming. Uh, if I start seeing it going into the red then I know that my audio is overloading. Uh, I don't know if I can get it to do that right now. <laughs> But if it is overloading, these meters will start showing up red at the very end of this little block here. And you'll know that you need to make some adjustments 
to your uh, audio. Now, the Canon cameras do have auto audio, and that's a menu option that you can set. But I find that it is better to, especially when you're uh, filming professionally, to have this set to manual audio. And then you can control how much audio levels are coming in to the camera. A good, quick, easy way to do that is our button over to the side. Now that's out of our shot here. But if you look at the back of your camera, you'll see just above the back wheel, there's a button there that has a Q on it. And uh, just press on that and notice how your screen looks then. It gives you all sorts of options that you can make quick adjustments to. And one of them is audio. Put your finger down on the little microphone symbol or icon that you see there. And now you can make adjustments to the manual settings of your audio. You'll see that you've got a little arrow uh, this way and a little arrow this way and here you are able to make manual adjustments to how much audio is incoming to the uh, camera. And just get it to a point where uh, you might have a mic connected to the... In fact, why don't we put on a mic? I've got one right here. and. Uh, if you don't already have one of these, I recommend that you purchase one of these. Rode is uh, a brand that I like. It's made in Australia, high quality. And this can completely change the quality of your video to have good sounding audio. People don't realize how important it is to get good audio. Now your mic, if it's like this one, uh, you might have some audio level settings that you can adjust right on the back of the microphone itself. So depending on uh, what your levels are at based on your settings for the mic itself is going to determine how much audio is coming into the camera. So it's important to have this on. It's important to know how to quickly change that. If you're stepping into a, a loud classroom with a lot of noise, you might have to adjust that. And uh, so just hit your Q button and just bring that audio level down. Or... If you see that your needles aren't going very far at all, you can quickly adjust that to be able to pick up better audio for your video. So that's uh, one setting that you can change quickly. Let's hit it again. Notice that if you needed to switch to HD from your 4K, well, with your quick button, you can quickly change the uh, movie record size to HD, uh, whether it be 59.94, or the 29.97 uh, there should be a film rate here as well it's hd at film rate so see how quickly you can change between 4k and hd and that that's handy sometimes we've already told you we want you to keep it in 4k as much as possible but let's say you're doing a very long interview and you've got a translator translating um, every statement the person's making well that could be a 45 minute video clip <laughs> And that's going to eat your card up very quickly if you are in 4K. So in that situation, if you know it's going to be a long interview, you might want to switch to HD. And this is how you can do it very quickly. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you today for this lesson. I hope that it has given you the confidence that you need to make that big switch from filming in the auto settings and take that mode dial, switch it to M, and start filming that way. Uh, we've got a lot more videos to come. We want to talk, as I mentioned, about uh, how to get good audio, how to film the type of interviews we're looking for, and how to shoot those B-roll shots, so the, that illustrative video out in the field. I believe that if you follow these lessons carefully, you go out and you do the practice video that I've been talking about, uh, that very quickly you will be able to then go out to the field and start uh, capturing that wonderful video for our video edits back here at ADRA Canada. I look forward to the day to see that first project that you turn in where you've gotten amazing interviews, you've gotten uh, some beautiful illustrative B-roll video, and we will be able to take all of that 
and tie it together into a beautiful promotional video that will not only be good for our uh, supporters, but is something that you'll also be able to use back in your home country. Until then, I want to uh, wish you all the best and uh, uh, pray that you keep safe as you are out there in the field uh, during this pandemic and uh, in some of the difficult situations that you might be filming in. Uh, stay safe out there and we'll see you on the next video. So long for now.